Welcome to Urban Legends, and in tonight's episode, we'll be counting down the top 5 scariest stories from Canada. As always, we've saved the creepiest for last. Beneath the bustling Bay Station in Toronto lies the lesser known and altogether creepier Lower Bay Station, a subterranean relic of the Toronto Transit Commission's 1966 routing experiment. The current Bay Station, constructed above it, is linked to its dormant counterpart by a single red door reserved for employee access only. While the defunct station occasionally serves as a backdrop for film productions, it's also the subject of eerie tales among transit workers. Reports of a spectral lady in red haunting the tracks are well known, with claims of her legless figure and void-like eyes appearing for mere moments before vanishing. The chilling encounters include unexplained cold spots and mysterious drafts in sealed-off areas. While some speculate that this ghostly presence might be tied to a tragic undocumented demise on the tracks, others suggest a connection to Potter's Field, the final resting place for the city's less fortunate, which was displaced in 1855 to make way for urban development. Okanagan Lake in British Columbia is home to an extraordinary legend of a lake creature, described by witnesses as a serpentine behemoth with a long and sinuous body. Its skin is said to be smooth, ranging in color from dark green to black, and some say it has a series of humps trailing along its spine. The creature's size alone is staggering, comparable to the famed Nessie of Loch Ness, stretching up to 15 meters, or 49 feet long. The Agapogo, as it is known, moves in a way that captivates onlookers, undulating vertically through the water in a hypnotic dance. The lake itself, a freshwater fjord, runs 127 kilometers and reaches depths of 232 meters, offering plenty of secret spaces for this elusive being. The Agapogo story is deeply rooted in the area's history, with the First Nations tribes encountering it and incorporating it into their lore as Nitaka, a powerful and malevolent supernatural force. This entity was once believed to require live sacrifices for safe lake crossings. Over time, sightings have persisted, with people reporting unusual water disturbances, humps, and coils, all adding to the creature's mystique. These accounts, supported by photos and videos, keep the legend of Agapogo alive, attracting both tourists and those who study cryptids. On a clear day in May of 1967, Stefan Michalak, an amateur geologist and industrial mechanic, ventured into the wilderness near Falcon Lake in Manitoba. Little did he know that this expedition would lead to one of the most intriguing UFO encounters in Canadian history. Michalak's attention was immediately drawn to two cigar-shaped objects emitting an otherworldly reddish glow. Hovering about 45 meters away, they seemed to defy the laws of physics. One of the objects descended, landing on a flat rock surface and transformed into a disc shape. The other remained airborne for a few minutes before vanishing into the sky. Curiosity drove Michalak closer to the landed craft. He sketched its details meticulously and noted how the metallic surface resembled colored glass. The craft measured roughly 10 meters in length and 5 meters in height. The object emitted a golden glow, shifting hues between gray and red. A faint sulfur scent hung in the air, and warmth emanated from the craft. As Michalak approached, disaster struck. A sudden blast of scorching hot air knocked him to the ground. The encounter left him with burns and a bizarre grid-like pattern on his chest and stomach. Authorities, including the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the United States Air Force, investigated the incident but the truth remained elusive. The Falcon Lake incident continues to captivate UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. Was it an experimental military craft or something else entirely? The scars on Michalak's body serve as a haunting reminder of that fateful day when the ordinary collided with the inexplicable, and the incident is deemed one of the staples of UFO encounters. The mystery of the vanished village of Anjakuni Lake is one of the eeriest tales in Canadian folklore. The story began in November of 1930, when a fur trapper named Joe LaBelle arrived at an Inuit village near Anjakuni Lake in Nunavut. LaBelle had visited the village a few times before and expected to find it bustling with activity. 
Instead, he found it completely empty. LaBelle discovered the hut still had food and clothing inside, suggesting that the villagers left in a hurry. Even more unsettling, he found a pot of stew that was still warm over a fire, indicating that the departure had been very recent. There were no signs of a struggle, and no footprints in the snow leading away from the village. Adding to the disturbing story, LaBelle found that the village burial ground had been disturbed. Graves were open and empty, and a pack of sled dogs were discovered buried under snow, having starved to death. LaBelle reported his findings to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who conducted a thorough investigation but found no trace of the missing villagers. Several theories have tried to explain the disappearance over the years. One of these suggests that a sudden natural disaster, such as a storm or an avalanche forced the villagers to up and leave abruptly. However, this doesn't explain the lack of footprints or why the villagers didn't ever return to the village. Another possibility is that a severe disease outbreak caused the villagers to flee, however there were no signs of illness or bodies left behind, which is usually what would happen in such a scenario. There are a few more fantastical theories that hint that the villagers were abducted by aliens. This idea is heavily fueled by multiple reports of strange blue lights seen in the sky around the time of the disappearance, although there is no real evidence to support this. Folklore and local legends suggest that supernatural forces were to blame. Some believe that the unlucky villagers were taken by spirits or otherworldly beings. Again, this theory lacks evidence. Another theory is that the villagers were abducted by another group of people. However, there were no signs of a struggle nor any evidence of an attack, also no footprints were found at the village. Despite many investigations and much speculation, the fate of the Anjakuni villagers remains unknown and is one of the great mysteries of the North. The Wendigo is a creature deeply embedded in Algonquin folklore, often described as a malevolent spirit associated with cannibalism and insatiable greed. The legend of the Wendigo of Fort Kent is one of the most chilling tales within this mythology. The story goes that a medical student named Thomas Burton moved to Fort Kent with his wife, who tragically died soon afterwards. Thomas was consumed by grief and isolation and according to legend, he began to hear whispers in the wind, calling him into the forest. Driven mad by these voices, Thomas ventured into the woods and was never seen again. It is believed that he was possessed by the Wendigo spirit and transformed into one of the creatures. Over the years, there have been numerous reports of Wendigo sightings in and around Fort Kent. Locals speak of eerie howls echoing through the night and shadowy figures lurking at the edge of the forest. Hunters have reported finding mutilated animal carcasses, often arranged in strange patterns, which they attribute to the Wendigo. One particularly chilling account comes from a group of campers who claim to have encountered the Wendigo during a winter expedition. They described seeing a tall emaciated figure with glowing eyes watching them from the tree line. Terrified, they fled the area and later found their campsite ransacked, with claw marks gouged into the trees. The Wendigo legend has had a profound impact on the cultural landscape of Fort Kent. It serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of isolation, greed, and the breakdown of social order. The story is often told around campfires and during local festivals, keeping the fear of the Wendigo alive in the community's memory. That concludes the top 5 scariest Canadian urban legends. Which was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more urban legends.